Hey, how's it going? Spencer here, and I have something super exciting for you guys today. It's the first field trip of my PhD research, and today I get to go out and ban some birds. So what that means is birds that we're researching, we need to be able to find them, we need to be able to track them, and be able to tell which one it is, so when we catch it again, we actually know which one it is. We have all the information from previous times we've caught it. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going out to a site called Toffer Nui, and I'll show you on a map in a little bit where that is. Uh, it's a site north of Auckland, the biggest city in New Zealand. And we'll be going out there, banding the birds, checking the nests, seeing if any of them are laying eggs yet. And we're also going to get some blood draws so that we know their hormone levels in their blood. So that'll give us a good indication of their health, uh, of their ability to breed, and just generally how well they're doing. And once we have them banded, we're also going to have GPS trackers on them that'll allow us to know how they move about, how, whether they're foraging really far away from where they live, or whether they're really close, whether it's quite variable, all those sorts of things. So that's what we're going to be setting up today. I'll have some amazing shots of them for you, and hopefully we'll get to see some really cool stuff today. So what birds are we looking at today? Now, I know that we're all waiting on the penguins. I am too very much want to see the penguins, but we're still going to be waiting on that one. Right now we're going to be working on gray-faced petrels. So a gray-faced petrel is a sea-going bird. They usually fly way out into the ocean to do their foraging. So we're going to see if that's different when they're a bit closer to the city, if they're a bit more impacted, or whether that drives them even further out into the ocean than normal. So gray-faced petrel, honestly, they're not super cute. Uh, they live in little burrows under the ground, they're just gray, kind of bland, um, but because they live in those burrows is why we're focusing on them. They're really easy to catch, but they also go way out into the ocean and doing those sorts of activities that are very interesting to us in this study. So great faced petrel is about this wide across. This is their wingspan. If this is the body in here and this is the tips of the wings, that's a great faced petrel. And they don't weigh very much. What do I have? They probably weigh a little more than my phone. Yeah, they weigh about half a kilogram, which is a bit less, or a bit more than a pound. Yeah, a bit more than a pound. So this, this is more or less a gray face petrel, this big. So we're gonna be going out there today. Hopefully I get some really cool shots for you. All right, so let's take a look at where Tafra Nui is. So first off, New Zealand is in the South Pacific, pretty close to Australia with Australia there in the West. And then we're going to be on the North Island of New Zealand, up by Auckland, the biggest city in New Zealand. It's got an area of about the same as Corpus, maybe a bit bigger, but a population of about 2 million people. So quite a big city, lots of lights, lots of noise, and that's what's interesting to us for this study. And then we're moving north of Auckland, up closer to Tafra Nui, and we're in this region between the, the Canal Bay and Omaha Bay. And those are marine reserves, so there's no fishing, and they're very tightly controlled. And then finally, we get down to Tafra Nui. Tafra Nui is a very narrow peninsula. It looks pretty small on this map, but it is a hike to get to the end of it. Right where it starts to separate from the mainland and become quite narrow, they have set up a predator fence. So New Zealand doesn't have many native mammals. It's essentially only birds, some reptiles, some frogs. And because of that, when humans first showed up, they brought along with them a lot of mammals that are really able to exploit the birds in New Zealand, particularly the birds that can't fly, which are quite a few of them here in New Zealand. So what they've done is set up a predator-free fence. And this is the main way that New Zealand is trying to, uh, trying to mitigate the issues coming from predators in the country. So they've set up this fence that completely cuts off the peninsula from the mainland, and they've set up a bunch of traps to get rid of any rats or stoats, uh, any wild dogs, any wild cats, anything that's causing issues. Um, so in this way, the peninsula is a very safe area for these birds to live, and that's why it's such a significant place. Getting out there is quite the trip. So first I took the bus on into the city, and from there I met up with one of my colleagues that... Uh, drove me out to the site. It's about an hour and a half drive from the city out to Tafra Nui. And once we got there, we had to 
uh, ditch the car, take a bit of a walk, and then we hopped into one of the trail cars. Uh, these ones are special for the park, and you can't have private vehicles just roaming through. So we only got a little bit away along the peninsula, and then it was a hike from there on in. And so we hiked on through the forest there, uh, heading out to some of the cliffs, and what we did when we got to the cliffs is opened up the bird boxes. So what these boxes are is essentially a fake burrow for the birds to live in, so they don't have to dig it out, and so we know exactly where they are going to be. It's quite a comfortable little nest for them, and it allows us to find them quite easily whenever we need to. So in one of the very first boxes we opened, we actually found the first chick of the season. So this was an oi, or gray-faced petrel, and it's pretty much just looks like a little fluff ball at that age, yeah. We found a few more nesting pairs, and we didn't want to disturb them too much, so don't have many photos of that. But did find one cold egg, which means it was an abandoned egg, unfortunately. And we found quite a few of these gray-faced petrels, or oies, and then we also found one corora, or penguin. We weren't expecting to see any penguins, so this was, this was quite the amazing spot. After we finished up with the nest boxes, we headed on to the end of the cliffs and waited for darkness, set up camp, and got ready to band some birds. Because we need to wait for it to get dark before we can do that, and start setting out the call, which sounds like this. <laughs> After we finished up with the banding of the birds, caught about 20-25 of them, and added about 10 new bands, then we just headed on out after a good long day of catching birds. Thanks so much for checking out this video. If you want any more information on petrels, penguins, tapernui, anything like that, I'm going to include some links below the video. And if you have any more questions beyond that, feel free to send it on to me. I'll have links for that below as well. Thank you.